for my flashcards. So I've been working a lot lately on the third grade kanji. I have my flashcards deck here. Uh, it's not all of them yet. I'm still working on the last like 10 cards and then I'll have them all. I think there is a hundred kanji that's taught in third grade. So I just kind of wanted to show you how I do my flashcards and what exactly or how exactly I study with them. So these ones right now I have memorized. But I still need to complete writing them. These ones are the only ones that are and completed. I use this also. Uh, I have the Shitaji key in there, but I use this. So these are com the only completed cards I have, except they don't have the, uh, yeah, this one's probably the only one. So on the front of the card, I put the actual kanji. Uh, instead of putting all the pronunciations with a single kanji, I learned the pronunciation that goes with with each jukugo or with each compound kanji. kanji. Means uh, to polish, means to research, study, things like that. So you have it here, and then I have what it means, the page that I can find it on my learner's course book, which I'll show you, and then a little kind of memorization tool that's in the course book. And then I have the same Jukugo on the back with the pronunciation. So in this word right here is Ken Q. And it means to study, research, investigation. That's what it means. And here is a verb. It's togu, togu, to grind or polish. So even though it's the same exact kanji, they're pronounced differently in different words. So like I said, the way that I memorize the pronunciations is by learning jukugo or learning words instead of just learning instead of just learning that this is pronounced ken sometimes and to sometimes you don't know exactly when those words or when those kanji are pronounced that way so it's easier if you can pick out jukugo so it just learn the word um, kenkyu, togu. So when you see gu after it, you know that this is pronounced tol. So then we have a few more. So then you have uh, to, togi ishi, togi ishi. And you have kenmaiki, kengaku, and kenshu. And then the uh, translated translation form. These are the only ones that are completed. Some of them I may not find the image for it. I'll show you where I got it from. But um, I actually haven't completed all I usually do it cards. at night. And what I do is I pick a card at I random. pick up a card and then I try my best to cover it. And I just look at the top part. Member, personnel. So then I try to recall how to write the kanji. So right now I'm learning the correct stroke order. And recalling all parts of a kanji which is pretty hard i mean it sounds easy but every little line is important so you don't want to write it wrong so then like i said i would look at member personnel and then i open this and then i write it i write the kanji right there and then i check my kanji and then um, if I got it correct, then I put it in this stack. If I got it wrong, then I put it back in the middle somewhere in here. So I can try again. And then I just keep trying. So, little things, little lines, certain lines can't be longer. And the edges need to line up in certain areas. Sometimes like this one for, um, for the word to research. I accidentally wrote the, this part first, but I remembered that it's come second. But see, like it's just little things like that. Each part of the kanji is important, so you have to remember how to write it exactly, or you're going to end up not making any sense, or you're going to end up saying something that you didn't mean. And for some reason, the word for short, <laughs> I can't get right. I haven't done it in a while because I've been on vacation. I just got back. And I'm trying to complete my um, trying to complete my cards so I can start working on 
So I can start working on all the drill books I have this to complete. This drill book. This one's my third grade kanji. And I'm on the last bit. So what I do is I write down the kanji and then I use my kanji learner's course book, which I really like. It's really nice. So I use this book and then I look up my stroke order. see it see the light is already died Dang. I don't know what's wrong with it Get this a little closer okay so in the back how you look up kanji is the best way anyway the easiest way for me is to look it up by stroke so how many strokes are in the kanji so I've been writing next to it after I made a flashcard of it I'll write the year that it's taught so these are third grade kanji, second, first, and, you know. So I, I look up the kanji and then I write it down in the corner. So um, it'll give you like a number like 371. Okay, so that's kanji 371. So we look here at these numbers. Find 371. So here it is, 371, and I've already made a flashcard for it, but that's how I look up the kanji. So while I, I usually do it in order, so right now the, the last few kanji cards are already in here. So we'll go ahead and do one. The next one up is Yol, this kanji, it's also pronounced Sama, and you'll see it in the word Kamisama. But you don't see it yol, I think, a lot. Uh, usually yol is just written yol in and, and hiragana and not in kanji. But, um, so here it is. Yol. So it is 14. Deji. Okay, so it's midnight. It is midnight. Okay. So the 14 count, that's how I found it. Look it up in the in my learner's course book. So I write down the kanji here. Flip it over. And then this is the number in the learner's course book. So it says here 501. So right on the top line I'll put just kind of the general meaning of the kanji. So like uh, like this one I just completed so I would write this all on the first line just like this kanji that I've just completed so I just kind of write a meaning just to kind of remember it by and then I'll write I can usually read this part or if I can come up with a way to remember the meaning or break down the uh, parts of it so I remember how to write it I mean I'll put like a little clue usually try to only use two sentences two lines and then I go and I'll go here and these are example words and these words are going to be probably the most common words that you'll see this is in a children's drill book so they're going to be really common words obviously so, um, so I write these down, I write the kanji first, and then I write the pronunciation right next to it. And I try to always make sure that I get both pronunciations in an example word, or how many ever there are. So like here's, there's three here, two, one, two, and here I see like this one, so this one has four. But, I mean, these two pronunciations are the same. It's just the ending part. But, so it really has three. But, um, yeah. Some of these have a lot. Let's see. Mm, some weird ones. Some here. There. 
You see like there's multiple pronunciations for certain kanji. It's a lot easier when there's only one, but sometimes there's an exception and especially like what was really weird, I don't even know if I can find it. But the the kanji for um for part. The kanji for part. It was it? It. I know what's in here. This kanji here. That first one. That first one's pronounced boo most of the time. But you also see it in a word uh in the word for room, which is pronounced he. He ya. And that's the only time it's pronounced he. So let me see. Kanji deep. I don't think I clicked the right thing. No, I did. So you see. See, it's like section, like say this kanji, which is a third grade kanji. I don't know why I can't find it. It's in there somewhere. But it's usually pronounced If you look boo. up heya. Here. Sometimes there's kanji that have odd pronunciations. So you just can never tell. You just have to learn to Google. And that's how you'll memorize. And I just write down the um, examples that are in this book and then I take my other third grade kanji book and I find it right here so it's on page 36 so I will find 36 and I will practice writing it in this drill book also okay. so here it is so I'll practice writing it and then I put the date when I've when I wrote it and then I look at their example words and if I don't have that one then I'll add it to the list and then that's all I do with that one and then if I still have room if I still have room then I go to the learner's course book and they have example words and then I just pick and choose from there until that until the card is pretty full until I have a good amount of example words. I can use the front and then I'll put the example words here whenever I get around to it just like the other cards and then I'll try to recall how to pronounce each word and that's how I'll learn the pronunciation is by learning words and not just the kanji. I don't want to look at a kanji and be like okay well this one only this is a bad example this one only has two pronunciations but I don't want a card and then have to remember. Let's see. See, like, like this word, and this kanji here, which I think means illness. I don't want to look at it and just be like, okay, it's okay, pronounced. Okay, well, it's sometimes in some words it's pronounced buol, in some words it's pronounced hey, in some words it's pronounced ya, in some words it's pronounced ya mai. That's just too confusing. You know, because, I mean, I, I'll get to a word and I'll be like, uh, well, is it byoki or is it heiki? Or, you know, like, like I don't want to have to guess. I want to know. I want to know if it's byo or he. And the only way to learn that is to learn the word. Byoki. Um, yamai ni taoreru. Uh, taoreru means to... So it means to be become or to fall sick or fall ill. But see, it's just an odd pronunciation. But I know that if I see it alone, it's probably going to be pronounced Yamai. But if I see a mu after it, and that's why it's in a different color, is because the kanji itself is pronounced ya and then mu follows it's an um uh, oku, oku, how do you pronounce it um i think it's okuri gana oku gana ok okuri gana let me that look it up real quick my flashcards and it's just what works for me and wow it's really really red is that red or is it just me 
I think looking at the screen made it worse. I'd like to see other people's flashcards too. I mean, if you guys have any suggestions on like what else I could even add on to my flashcards. Oh, and also when I'm done, like I said, these aren't really completed. I'm going to have the example words on the front with no hiragana, no furigana. So it'll just have this part and then this will be on the back. And I'll also go through and I'm going to highlight the pronunciation for each one. So here it is. De, 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 de. And then in this word it's pronounced dai. So I, I highlight the dai. So then I can kind of look, just kind of glance and see the different pronunciations. But this one's pretty much pronounced the same. Okay. That's in the word um, to excuse, like when you are trying to pardon yourself for interrupting someone or it, before you enter a room, you can say, Shitsure shimasu. And the kanji's up here somewhere, right there. Shitsure. It's like, excuse me for being, or it's like you're saying, I'm being rude or something, I think, is what it kind of translates to, discourtesy and politeness. So when you're saying shitsure shimasu, it's just kind of like, excuse me for um, bothering you, kind of. I bought them a couple years ago, and nothing really came out of them. It's just too hard to learn this way. But these are kanji a day uh, calendar um, pieces, and uh, what I do is I go through and I'll cut out this part. And then um, tape it onto the front when I find the, the correct one. So that's where those pieces are from. But it has it in kanji, furigana, and in romanji. So if you're looking for something like this, I mean, it's pretty nice, but it's a little hard to learn this way. And they just repeat words. So in heikin, the, it's going to probably be the same exact example word in the one that has keen in it or kane. Um, I don't know. But this kanji for gold will probably have the same example word. I wish they had a more variety of words. They just repeat words. So uh, that's kind of disappointing. But yeah, I mean, it's nice. You'll probably end up forgetting the word. So it's, I guess, good recall or good just to see it multiple times so you can remember it. I don't know. Nine more kanji and I will have completed the third grade kanji drill book. So I, I won't be done with third grade. Um, the, these two drill books will be done but then I will move on to um, third grade sentence books and I have another like Oops. Oh, God, this stuff won't stand up. I'm still working on this one um, right there. So I just started it because I just completed my other second grade Kokugol book. So these are pretty easy. This is just Kokugol um, sentences. And it's pretty easy. Uh, it's just something I do when I'm kind of bored with doing flashcards or something. But then I have this book uh, kanji kanji denshu cho so it's a kanji practice book so it's pretty much the same thing I'm gonna see the exact same kanji that I saw in these two drill books so it's gonna give me extra practice so this is this is what I'm gonna do next after these, and then I'm gonna work on the flashcards for a few more months before I even think about moving on to fourth grade kanji. I'm going to stick with third grade for a little while longer um, because, like I said, I think there's like a hundred of them that are taught in third grade. Um, uh, and then I have sure. this one. This is also just kanji third grade drill book. This one will come after this one. It's got quite a bit more, or I should say quite a bit less furigana. So I just gotta make sure that I get them down before I really try this one. 
but it's just a drill book. And it's the same exact kanji as the ones I learned in the other ones. And the ones that I'm going to review on my flashcards. So those will be in This next. is my schedule. Although I... I did follow it for a while, but it's it's too much for me to work on in one day because I have a work full time job. But you can see my days off are gets Yobi and Kyobi, so um, I have the most work on that. So gets Yobi and Kyobi is Monday and Tuesday is my days off, and I have um, Shoto, which is my Shoto practice, which I haven't done in a while. Kokugo, which is language. Genki and the textbook and then the workbook for Genki. The bottom is um, Fukushu, which is review. I used to use the memorize and the Anki and I would use that for Fukushu, but I haven't done it in a while. And then Suyobi, which is Wednesday, is uh, Kagaku, which is science. And then I have work, Shikoto. Mokuyobi, Thursday, is Shokai. And then work, Fukushu, and Kinyobi is Friday, and I have Chidi, Sekatsu, um, Tex, and then work, and Fukushu. And then we have Doyobi and Ichiobi, which is Saturday and Sunday, and I have Kanji practice, uh, Kaku, which writing practice, pretty much, and work on both those days. So, like I said, the only two days I have off are just Monday little tiny flashcards fit in your pocket. So you just look up the size. Um, you can look up word cards by millimeter. I got the ones with the grid, so that's easier to write kanji in. But you can get blank. This ones one too. is just a vocabulary, I believe. Yeah, it's a random vocabulary of words that I picked up in reading. There's not much in this one because it's still being put together. This one is Jukugo. Jukuko is compound kanjis, so it's just has the kanji look on at the front. So it would be dezo ko. Those dezo three kanjis. It is the first kanji means cool. The second one means storehouse or possess, and the last kanji is uh, storehouse also. So those together make the word refrigerator. Sometimes it helps to remember things like that, um, the meanings, and then this the translated is word. The scientific word for bug, um, insect, uh, konchu. So flip it over. So the first kanji means insect, and the second one means bug. Makes it easier to remember. Konchu is the pronunciation, and like I said, it's a scientific word for insect or for bug. Scientific word for bug, which is insect or how to yes. pronounce it. Shichimencho, shichimencho. So seven-faced bird is turkey. So shichimencho. Doshi, doshi is verbs. Flip it. So then we have just sorry, not opening very easy. So then we just have a list of verbs, and then on the inside is just the pronunciation and what it, um, the translation. Meow. I always thought this verb was really funny. Meow. <laughs> It's kind of easy to remember. It means to look good on somebody. So if something looks good on somebody, then you can use the verb niao. You put the thing, ga, and niao. Niao u. So you see it. Niao u. And then niao. this one, I think, is just a whole bunch of just, yeah, kanji. This is my first one I made. So this is the one I took to work with me all the time. A little thicker than the other ones, and it's just kanji that I had been studying. So I just have the kanji, and then the number where I can find it in the um, kanji learner course book that you saw. So I could find the page if I want to look up again, and then a little description or um, what the kanji yeah, means. There. It's a description. Oh, free shipping, seven fifty nine. And there's a description. 
that's what they are. So you get four of them. And you can get gridded. I got the grid ones, or you can get blank okay, ones. Okay, so I finally got them done. So these and these up here are all of my Sun and Se flashcards. And before I said there was 100, I meant 200. I don't know why I said 100. So I have my flashcards completed finally. Third grade kanji. These are the two completed ones I have. So they're all highlighted for the pronunciation for the word that I'm studying. And then they have a way to kind of memorize what the kanji means. Kanji on the front and then some jukugo on the back. And then I try to recall how to pronounce each word. And then if I don't remember, I can go back here and look it up. And then the uh, translation of the word. So this is a completed uh, flashcard. I always thought that was a funny verb. Okay. So on the topic, flashcards. Um, let's see. I'll have to show you this when it's complete. Uh, I've just been putting together a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff I've collected over time. Uh, gives me practice, really. It's, it's kind of silly, but I have like a whole stack of like uh, things that I've saved. Here's one from my notebooks. Do with them, so I've just been throwing them in here. Um, okay, here's some of my really, really old flashcards, but I don't have, they're, they're taped down, so I can't show you the back. But I also have these ones. These ones were on my wall. Oh, yeah, did I show you this? This is pretty cool. It's another, um, like, you can wear it when you're bike ride. Right? It's reflective. Um, it's a traffic safety uh, omamori waterproof one so it's pretty nice reflective like I said so I can wear it when I bike ride pretty cool. oh and then Dondo said it and then I flipped it over and it had a translation and the pronunciation and these were two um, these were the ones I brought to work and they were a full index card and I brought those to work in an envelope um, this is the cover of the envelope, and these, I mean, they're nice, but they're, they're so big. I have to show you that. Anyway, um, door. So, and then here's my original hiragana chart that I had with me at work. That's how I used to write them. It, it looks so weird now. I don't know why. Like, my food, I used to... He's right, it's so weird. Uh, I guess these are not bad. Look at my ins. Weird. Look at my day. I don't like it. Yo, yo, it's weird. It's probably more. But this is the Hiragana alphabet. Hiragana chart. That's my original one. Probably not the first one I've written, but this is the one I took to work with me. Here's some more bad kanji. This is like the original uh, flashcards. Sugashi. Sugashi looks really bad. Don't write kanji like this. <laughs> Ugh, they look so bad. 